Notts County Talk, something a little bit different for this video. We are going to be taking your unpopular opinions, which we've done on Facebook, Instagram, and on Twitter. Many of them have come as DMs, as people clearly didn't want to put them out there for, for people to read, did they, George? Yeah, there's a few There's a few in there that might might your toes curl, but you know, yeah. we're going to talk about them. We've got a fair few. We've gone for 10. Um, we think that's a good number to, to go with. At the same time, um, we're not putting people's names on here because obviously some people did DM us. If, if you are one of the people that put it on social media, I'm sure people have already replied to you. There's been a lot of messages flying around with some of what you've got. But we'll kick off. We've got strongly agree, agree, disagree, and strongly disagree. We'll be putting our pints wherever we think we feel with your comments. Shall we kick off? Yeah, you go right. first. First one, George. This one was always going to come up. We should not have sat Neil Hardy when we did. I, I, I agree, but ever so slightly, as you can see. Um, when he was sacked, it was a shock. There wasn't many games left of the season. Um, but, you know, time, time comes into it. I think, I think Bertrand was probably someone that, you know, they had their eye on, the owners. Um, and he's probably come available. He's probably given options. We were on a bit of a bad run of form. Um, we came off, you know, some terrible games to watch as well as results. Um, and I'm sure that wasn't pleasing the owners. But we, we were still within the playoffs. Um, and, you know, Look how well he's done sort of this season. I know it, it's all relative and, and he's been at the club for a long time and things can change. But I do think purely just based on the fact of him being sat, I think it was a bit too early. No, I could even go further down. Honestly, if you remember some of those games, I think one of them was Yeovil, one of them might have been Bournemouth. Maybe both of those games were like two goals behind. And he just lumped players on. He he'd gone away from his philosophy. And once a manager goes away from their philosophy, how do the players keep buying into that? Yeah. From, my, from my point of view, it's done amazingly at uh, Solihull, but I don't think Solihull will be up there next season. Again, they lost in the playoff final with him. We wouldn't, would we have won the league this season that sort of went off? I don't know. Um, boy, Def well, pretty much definitely not. I can't, I can't see that happening. For me, I could go even further down. I, I don't think we should have kept Neil Hardy any longer. Right then. Second opinion that we've got in here, and this is, I think this is going to be a very unpopular opinion. Um, our two new strikers, Scott and Langstaff, won't score 20 between them, but Kyra Mitchell will score 27 this season. No, I'm going to, I'm going to bring it back a little bit. Go on, um, you, go, you go first, first one. If they don't score 20 between them, barring an injury or something like that, or a complete change of system, which is not going to happen, they've been bought in to be the main strikers. Yeah. If they don't score 20 between them, I'll be gobsmacked. Yeah. By the sheer amount of chances we create as a club. Now, I know we don't have Bursch anymore, we have Lou Williams, but the philosophy is still the same. If we don't, if we don't, if they don't score 20 between them, I, I, I think, already, I think they're going to score 30 between them. Okay. At least, okay. personally. Yeah, I, I think you never know which way football's going to go. You know, there's, there's obviously ideals. You know, Kyra Mitchell was an ideal signing last season and it obviously didn't work out. Um, and it's ideal if these two come in and score 30 goals this season, but you know, you never know. Like they did well last season, yeah, they did well together, but you never know. I'm not, I'm not saying I agree with this at all, I, I don't agree with it. I think they probably will score more than 20, but like I say, there's always that, that thing there where it might not happen. Uh, but I do think Kyra will have a better season. Yeah, if, season. We, if we'd gone the second part of that, I wouldn't say 27 goals. No, if we'd gone the second part though, I'd, I'd go there. I think, he'll have a, I think he'll have a good season. Yeah. I'm not going up there because that'll be 27 goals. I think I think Cairo will have a good season. Yeah, if we don't see another striker coming now, uh, between now and the end of the season, I think Cairo has a good season. Yeah. Okay, third opinion then, third unpopular opinion. This was sent in by someone, early 20s they've given us as their age, early 20s, no specific age. Okay. In my lifetime, not mine personally, we'll see not establish itself as a top division club. That's a hard one. As in Premier League. Top division. <sighs> it's a long time, isn't it? Like, early 20s in his lifetime, that like, could be 60 years. I'm going to say agree. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say agree because I think you've got to be optimistic. 
You know, we, we run a channel for Notts County, you know, we want the success. We're seeing a, a steady, steady progression at the minute. And I think once we get out of this league, we will see a bit of a quicker progression that we have seen under the owners in the last couple of years. Um, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean all of these owners because, you know, in a lifetime of a young 20 year old, that's a long time. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm going to say I agree because I'm ever the optimist. And I think you, you've got to look on the bright side and, and be hopeful. Uh, you can't really base it off anything else other than what we have at the minute and I think what we have in place at the minute is it's a good system uh, a lot of you know people within the football world management coaches uh, players talk very fondly of not you know the way it's run at the moment so I'm hopeful that can pull through in the next few years and the next few seasons and we see some I mean not in the prayer why not if it's just say top few divisions like including the championship I'll be up here yeah it's just I, I personally feel if we are going top division as Premier League that league is going to become cut off soon I think we'll start to see the three teams that go off in the championship come straight back down maybe this year but uh, no I do I think I think the league's going to be cut off you've got teams like the top six that never come down from that league you've got teams like Aston Villa who are gone smacked if they came down now uh, Leicester don't think they'll come down now You've got teams in there competing, West Ham won't come down. You're already looking at nearly half the league that are never going to come back down in my, mm. in my eyes. Everton diced with it, but they're not going to have to do that again. You know, even when those teams go down, they don't come down. So I feel like the top league is going to become very closed off and it's going to be three teams coming up and three teams going down. But like you say, we've got the structure of the club at the minute. The club have everything they need to be successful. Look, look at Stockport. They're out this league. They're like third favourites to go up again. Yeah. Yes, they've recruited really well. But they're third favourites. You do that any other league, you're not third favourites to go back up. No. Like I really do think it all hinges. We'll see. We'll see this club like blossom when they get out of this division. Like I, I fully believe that. Nice so work. I know. Nice I know. I've been doing my GCSE English prep. <laughs> but I, I genuinely believe, maybe not the prem, but this club are going places. Yeah. Fourth question. Well, fourth opinion, I suppose. Goes like this: the world's oldest professional club, football club, is a curse and puts unnecessary pressure on us. I pour it off the table if I didn't want to drink it. You're that. Yeah. Go on. I am. Go on then. And you know, football is pressure. If you're playing football, you have to be able to deal with pressure. Um, I wouldn't say it's a curse. I think it's something to be proud of that, that you want to do all these professional football clubs. It's something that I think in the position we are now, the players, the club, the staff are striving towards regaining that sort of title because we're obviously not in, in, in the EFL. Um, and I think it's, I think it's a, it can only be a positive thing. It's something that, like I've already said, a lot of fans are proud of. It, you know, it's on the stadium uh, before we got relegated, obviously. And I, I think without, without pressure, you know, what, what is it? You need pressure, you need that pressure there. Um, and if you know if you can't deal with pressure, I mean, it, it, that's a minute pressure to a player as well, being like, you, you know, you need to get this club back up to be, make them the oldest professional football club. That is, that's not, that's not huge pressure. If they can't deal with that, then I don't know. So I, yeah, I strongly disagree with that. I disagree, I disagree as well. Not with you, I disagree with the, that opinion. But yeah. I think, to me personally, I'm not really that bothered about it. Maybe because we're out, we're not in the football league now. Maybe if you'd have said that, maybe I didn't really think about this. You know, we got relegated that season. I didn't. I never really thought to myself, "Oh, we're going to lose that that title." I thought we're going to be out of the football league, like, mm -hmm. and not to have not been out of the football league. I never thought we'd lose the title. So for me, it might be a bit controversial. I don't really mind about that. Crystal Palace have, have gone for it, aren't they? Yeah, they're Crystal, they're they're Crystal, they're yeah, they're yeah they're let them off. Why not? Um, we like to. No, but I disagree with the comment, but I'm not massively fussed about having that. So, yeah, I don't think it's I don't think it's an unwanted pressure, like you said. Yeah. Right, unpopular opinion number five. Monto Finance could have been the best thing to happen to Knotts if the aftermath was handled properly. <laughs> Bit in sync that was. Go on. When do you ever see something that ridiculous happen to a club? Right, you've seen ownership now, 
the word that keeps getting banned around is fit and proper, right? Like a derby at the minute. When you ever see a football club have that happen to them and still get promoted and get into League One from that position. Okay. They're in League One. If it's handled better afterwards, you're moving that up. No, I'm not. How can you disagree with that? Because, you know, football is football and, you know, handling things a certain way and it's all great in hindsight, but you, you've got to be taking, you've got to be bringing an owner in that is willing to lose millions on a League One club and you're not, you're not going to get that. You can bring in, you know, the best people in football and with money, you know, in the, in the state that it was, you know, we lost, like, we lost millions and there was actually times as well, like Schmeichel, he agreed to terminate his contract or to, to, to go to Leeds or we would have had to pay him a million pound on top of that and these are things that would have added to our debt and it was too much debt for anyone to come in. I mean, don't get me wrong, you know, if, if a multi-billionaire did come in and think I want to make Notts County this and that, yeah, definitely, it, it could have been handled better. But I think from, from a realistic perspective, uh, perspective nah, you, you really going to show Wonder if finance could have been the best thing to happen to Notts, I agree. Yeah, it could have been if there was like billionaire, like multi-billionaire owners, but you're not going to get that. I'm, I'm talking realistically. Realistically. I'm saying that club were in League One. Yeah. And everyone overpaid, staff probably. Do you not feel players that. Players on two longer contracts. Do you not feel though the way that it happened, the media surrounding it, I would have thought someone might have wanted to take a real punt. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And you, I think you always do. Do you know what I mean? I, you know, it's your club. I think you always do think, you know, why don't someone just take a punt and buy the club? And I mean, especially as not so how many times have you know, the club been up for sale? And, possible administration and things like that. That's just in our lifetime as well. Um, but yeah, it's just it for me it was just too much out of reach. When you look when you look at the details and, and the, the actual money that we we were, you know, putting out and wasn't being sort of replaced or even put in the first place, I think. The Monday season seen as a joke, really. Yeah. But could you imagine if we were still in E1, we wouldn't be thinking that now. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. So hundred percent. I'm agreeing with this unpopular opinion. Fair enough. I think hands down, hands down, this is the most controversial one I'm about to say now. Okay. So if you're watching at home, I apologise, but you know, it's a good talking These aren't out. our opinions. These aren't our opinions. These are sent in from people that follow us and people online. Um, we did a bit of a background search as well on this one to make sure it was a legitimate not Um Alan Hardy was good for County, helped us when we needed it. He should be respected for what he did for the club. Got a play we got we got the playoffs, which with better officiating we could have been back in League One. Yeah. Let's be honest, all of us sat here at some point, went to a game, whether it was the game against Crew, I think it was, where there were a lot of fans in the ground. And we were thinking we're, we're in good hands here. Same as me. Yeah. Only one on holiday. Let, let's be honest. Very, very few fans will be sat there in our home, honestly thinking, we'll never know to him. Never thought it was going well. Come on, before that Coventry player final, that player semi final, fans were thinking good things. Bought Kevin Nolan in, we really got on with Kevin Nolan. It unraveled. But you can't respect him now. You shouldn't be respected now. No, I think his problem is, I think, I, I kind of understand where he's coming from, to some respect. I think, I think Hardy's intentions are in the right place. I don't think he ever intended for this to happen. I, I think no. he was putting as much, if not more, into the club uh, than he should have. Um, to, to try and better the club, to try and get us into a better position. He's put all his eggs in one basket in that season and he, even the season got relegated, you know, he, he spent a lot of money, he bought in players, you know, Hemmings, Dennis, we just didn't really solidify a good defence and I think that's where the downfall was. I think he had good intentions for Knotts. 
but I think I think his ego got in the way a little bit. Mm. If we're if we're going to be honest, I, I also don't agree with replying on Twitter. Not as an I, owner. I just no. I mean, I mean, from a fan's point of view, still right now. I think well, just leave it. Yeah, yeah. So let's go through in a really good place at the minute. I agree with you, intentions are there. Look, there's one point where we're all cheering his name, so let's not get that wrong. But right at this point, right now, no, I can't I can't say respect. Next one up, we reset. We'll reset. It's coming a little bit, George. <laughs> we're slightly on the reset here. And I think you'll agree with this one. This opinion, I wouldn't say it's necessarily unpopular. We now have the best owners since Derek Pavis. Now, we're relatively young still. We can't say we've seen a huge number of owners. Well, but well, enough. Enough, but these owners right now, genuinely, I am excited. There yeah. we go. Yeah. No, I am. No, I am excited. I am really excited. The way they've handled themselves at the club, the way they've done everything, the way they've made signings. We don't have a clue who they're signing. Yeah. We don't. We went to Gateshead, took one of their players, and people were having a joke. Imagine if we went and took another one. We did. Like you would have thought, at least people would be sniffing around and thinking, looking for some sort of like journal article on it, possibly managers. Odds. Oh, Lou Williams wasn't. I didn't even see him on the manager odds. How do you, that doesn't happen these days at football clubs. Yeah, uh, yeah. How's he kept on the wraps? Crazy. Man. Yeah, and and that look. If that had have come out, might have lost one of those players to Wrexham or Chesterfield. It's not come out. We've got we've got it done really well. I think the whole ethos of the club, you know, the me, the, the media access that they're giving to fans, constant communication. We get um, Jason Turner. Uh, writing things for us, you know, three, four times a season. It's brilliant. Best, best. We've not got promoted, but I still say our own are incredible. And, yeah. uh, and this model relies on, as we've said it earlier in the video, relies on us getting out of the National League. Yeah, no, I agree. I think, you know, from my knowledge, um, obviously I'm, I'm 26, so mid 20s, from my time supporting Knots, which has been just under 20 years because I started supporting when I was about seven. Um, yeah, without a doubt, the best owners. Uh, that's why I've had an understanding of it as well, you know. So, yeah, I, I do strongly agree. They, they seem to, you know, it's, it's not just about money pumped in and certain things looking right in certain places, it's actually having things in place that are working well. I mean, you, you've just got to look around, you know. The, the, it's not just players that are going up, you know, at, at, like Wharton, he's just stepped up to, to B2. I don't know, it's not a massive step, but it's still a step up. Birchnor and Doyle, just gone to League One. Um, you know, these things aren't... Alex Lacey. Yeah, Alex Lacey's just gone to Hartley League Two. You know, these things aren't just things that, you know, happen accidentally so often. You know, this is one season and that's four people that have made a step up. And I'm, I'm talking about back, like staff that's not... Like fan from might not even know about. Um, it's you know ev it's not just the players. It's it's everyone, the coach, the staff, everyone is at such a high level, um, and they just they know football and they know what they're doing in football. And I think that is the huge difference when you look around. Like I'm not going to say any clubs specifically, um, but there's obviously some clubs out there that spend heavily, and they don't seem to have any sort of long-term plan it seems very one dimensional and yeah they might not have the the sort of resources behind the scenes that, that not have and i think that is you know our key ingredient to, to really pushing on this where season. our plan looks good for me is look at the age of the players we're signing that is a long-term plan we're not we're not hedging our bets with 30 31 32 year olds they're all players that have got either room to grow at knots mm -hmm. or resale value yeah Look, we didn't we didn't get money on Carl Wooden. We lost money on Carl Wooden, but that was sort of a let's take let's take the risk. We think we can, he can get us promoted. Didn't happen, but other than that, spot on. Yeah. Question eight then, player based. It's a it's a you know very large statement. Alan George is in the top ten, not players of all time. 
Is this in his lifetime or all time? It says player of all time. You joke. But yeah, very much this like on on the edge. You, you I'm saying I disagree. Have you put this one in? No, I haven't. No. Top ten of all time. Even in my lifetime, we'll put in top ten. Really? Yeah. Quick, quickly, he's only top ten. Please use. Yeah. Carl for me. Cash for Michael. Yeah. Come on. Come on, if you go. Ben Davis. Ben Davis. I'm gonna be honest. Massive fan, and this is like a personal point of view. Belkowski, loved him. Okay. Class. Um, Ruben Rodriguez. Really? Yeah. Isn't Ruben. That, I mean, it's Ruben Rodriguez, but we're in the National League now. You got around that. George Bates Moss. Some good seasons for us. Yeah, I love Ruben. Well, I'd, 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 I'd put Ruben in if he was getting two two out of ten every every single week. Like I'll put Ruben in there. Yeah, but that's not top ten best player of all time, is My it? Top 10. Isn't it? <laughs> My top ten. Okay. Okay. Um, no, you're on fire now. John Stead. No, you're not. <laughs> you're messing. Right, right. No, I'm gonna move it here. But it can't. It's not of all time. It, it's not of all time. I'm still in disagree. Remember that. It's I'm just not massive in it. It's I not top ten. Of all I think time. in my lifetime, he's probably very, very close. And I think. Taking that into account, uh, I think he, I think he's a very, very good player for Notts. A player that I used to love watching, um, exciting player. Um, you know, he's gone on to. I've been a bit harsh here. You said it to me. He's got, he's gone on to have a decent career as well in, in the AFL. So, yeah, I, I, I don't agree, but I'm, I'm, I, I disagree because I think that, like you said, there is a lot of players in there. You know, I'm thinking about like, so V Hughes, McGregor. Grealish, yeah, yeah. you know, Rogers, you know, we've had Schmeichel, we've had lots of good players, lots of good players. Um, and they're just the players to think about, like, you know, in my top 10, personally, just for, for the pure fact of how good of a servant he was as well, I put Mike Edwards in there. Yeah, I'll probably put him in there. Um, but yeah, no, it, it, for, for me, in my lifetime, I'd probably say he's on the verge of being top 10. He was a very good player for us. Yeah, he was. He was. I, I was being a bit harsh at the start, and if this is your unpopular opinion, you're watching this, I, I saw you there a little bit. But he's up there. But you know, I think if we had a, like a longer reign of watching Knox, like we, maybe we were like 15, 20 years older, yeah. you know, some of the real glory days, you know, winning playoffs at Wembley and Mark Stallard's in there then. Yeah, well, he plays that Mark Stallard in. I've seen Mark Stallard play plenty of times. Yeah, but how old were you? You're only 15. Now. <laughs> no, I remember, I remember him playing that. I remember no, no, playing. no, yeah. So then you got to put him when he got out of He's up there, isn't he? Yeah, he's up there. So it's, a, it's a difficult, it's a very, very good question. You, 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 look, you look at like the history of Knox, you know, you, you, you Charlie Palmer's. I, I can see some people being up here, genuinely, some people right down there. Yeah, yeah. I think it's very age-driven, isn't it? I'm not, I'm not going to move this again because I'm going to embarrass myself, but I wish I had, but my man, you did. <laughs> <laughs> I let myself down there. Um, I still put Ruby in there. Fair enough. Next one. It's on. another player one, sent in. Come on. Someone in their late 20s this time. Late 20s, I'm saying 27, 28, 29. Okay. Jamal Campbell Rice is one of the best players to play for Knots in this person's lifetime. Fast. Mm -hmm. Another player based on you. I was, you a, like I was a massive fan of Campbell Rice. I'm done. You staying there? I can't move. Oh wow, on the fence. On the fence. How boring of you. No. Okay, no, that's fair enough. That's really rude. <laughs> I'm a rude guy. Um, yeah, for me, Campbell Rice was class. I used to love, you know, going down to watch, watch him play. And I think when he played for Nazi, he was brutal. You know, when I used to go down and he was in the team, he was like the player for me to watch. Yeah. Uh, that was a great opinion to be fair. Um, yeah, I can't really say much more. I don't massively agree. I don't think he's one of like the best player in, in, in my lifetime. But in terms of you know making something happen on on the flick of a switch, I think I'm looking at the position yeah, again. Though I'm looking at the position and playing that played that position. You know, like you've already said, there's Jack Grealish in there, outstanding player, and I just think Hector Sam. 
the sun. Um, uh, Inform on FIFA. I remember having it. Wow. I mean, if that's one of your childhood memories, you've had a great childhood. Yeah. I just think to myself, one of the best. Again, it's the debate we had with the last question. You threw Mike Edwards in there, Schmeichel. I put Judge ahead of him. I put Ben Davis ahead. Purely because Ben Davis, I'm sure Ben Davis took 23 kicks and scored 25. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, he was one of them. Like, if you sat there and look, we're going to score it, yeah. and you would literally, literally score. Yeah, it literally felt like he scored more than he took. Like, what a player. Yeah. I can't say he's not, and I can't say he is. Like, I'm so torn on this yeah, one. I nice. just, tough one. I just can't, I can't say it. It's a, it's a good opinion, and obviously, young lad really, really agrees with it. Tenth and final opinion. Big one. Okay. Do talk and put in this one. Okay. The atmosphere at Meadow Lane should be much better than it is given the size of the club and the stadium. I would never just stay in the middle. <laughs> okay. Uh, the reason I'm staying in the middle is because there's so many factors to it. I mean, I think if we're going to be honest with ourselves, and you know, the, the, it, it's true, it shows it. Um, I think our stadium is just too big for us as we are now. You know, it's, I think it's nineteen thousand five hundred seat stadium, if I remember rightly. Um, I know we can't fill it out now because of you know safety regulations in the Jimmy Hill stand. Um, but I just think it's too it's too big for us. You know, if we had a smaller stadium, um, close, cl you know, corners filled in and, and things like that, I think it'd be a better atmosphere with the atmosphere we have at the minute. I think, you know, you've got to think our main singers sit at the top of the car and it's just, it's far away from the pitch. It's, it's probably the highest point in the stadium and it just sort of echoes out because there's no side, there's no sides, there's no corners. And yeah, for, for me, as much as I think the atmosphere can be good at knots. Great for speed, players. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But you, you know, you got to think about the the attendance at that one. And it's twelve, thirteen thousand. I think we've really got to be pushing on, sort of up the up the pyramid to, to be getting, you know, turnouts like that at Meadow Lane. You know, especially now, obviously, with the other side of the track going up to, to the front. I put it here more of a desire. Yeah, one hundred percent atmosphere. Yeah. I I think. Look, I look at Stockport. They were doing, I'm not saying we need to do this, they were doing fan marches before games. Hundreds and hundreds, if not maybe a thousand people through the street before a game. Really getting behind the team. I'm not saying we need that. When we went to Stockport, I know they beat us 3-0, it's easy to do it when you win in 3-0. The atmosphere was good. The atmosphere was really good. Yeah, but if you flip the coin on its head, I remember speaking to a couple of Stockport fans after that game, and they said it was really hostile. Yeah. I think people had obviously you know been out all day maybe, yeah, and you know people can take it too far. I'm not saying we need that. I am saying, and I've advocated for this before. I would like to see, and a lot of clubs have now. Some people think oh, it's very Americanized or new. I would like to see a scene section placed down the side between the pavis and the cot. People that want to see midway up the cot, next to the pavis. I think we need an atmosphere, but I also think. You look at the, this. This comes from recent memories, doesn't it? Recent memories before the playoffs were seven games to go the rest of the season: Dover, Weymouth, uh, Altrincham. I think we couldn't get top. We couldn't get top three really, and we couldn't really fall out of the playoffs. There was nothing to play for against teams that came and sat in. So, in recent memory, the atmosphere was. I, I remember sat in the in the Sunderland game, thinking this is like pre-season friendly. Do you remember? Whereas if those games were flipped on their head and the most recent games you remember were Wrexham at home and Stockport at home and Grimsby at home, yeah. Well, I feel a lot better about it. But the atmosphere is not, it, it has to be built from the pitch as well. Like yeah. if we're going for a title charge next year, which personally I'm happy to say right now, I feel we'll go for, yeah. the atmosphere will, will lift instantly. Yeah. Stockport's atmosphere wasn't like that all season. It, no. it grew, yeah. and and as the club go for that top spot, it will grow. It will grow, 
Um, should it be a bit club outside like Green Deal outside the stadium and everything like that? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And to be honest with you, I think it's not like it's a bad thing. You know, we can grow into it 100%. There's no doubt in my mind that we can yeah. grow into it. Also, it's not yeah. a terrible atmosphere. Yeah, no, it's, it's not, not a terrible atmosphere. Yeah. You know, I can't think, like the games that you mentioned there, yeah, Stockport, Grimsby, Wrexham, uh, especially Grimsby in the um, in the playoffs, that was that was really good, yeah, yeah. really good. Um, so yeah, it, it definitely can be achieved, but I think the thing that didn't help us in the last few seasons is is consistency. I, I think if we showed a little bit more consistency, and we had that sort of biting edge, and I mean, I suppose it's you know more clinical football, which I don't know everyone wants, but I think you know when we are playing well and things sort of are going our way, I think the atmosphere is good. It can definitely be improved, but I think given the situation that we are in the money, you know, we, we, we've already talked about the fact of the stadium, things like that. I think that's why I don't either agree or disagree, because I think you've got to take everything into account. Yeah, there's also quite a few uh, popular opinions about away fans. Now, we don't want to comment massively on away fans because we probably made 40, 50% of away games last year, probably 40% of away games because just because of reasons we, we can't make every single game all season so we don't want to comment too much because the people that spend a lot of money going to all the way games are fair play some people went to dover three times there was a comment that i, I want to have about standing and i want myself advocate for standing away games yeah definitely atmosphere is incredible when you stand away games obviously there's people that can't stand but on some of those unpopular opinions about away games standing increases atmosphere without a doubt yeah 100 percent. I, I think atmosphere is important but I also think it's important not to sort of vilify people that just enjoy watching football and maybe not getting too involved in that side of things. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like there are fans that just go week in, week out because of their love for watching football and they love watching nuts and they might not necessarily want to get involved in that stuff. It is for some people, it isn't for some people. That's just life, you know, everyone doesn't agree on one thing and that's, I think, why we have that problem. What I do think though, is like you say about vilifying people, this season, everyone needs to be together. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely everyone. From people that come twice a season to the people that go every single game and they're in the ground an hour before kickoff and they're living and breathing it. Every single person needs to be together. Because if not, it makes it difficult. Because thing when you're at this level, things get fed back to players. It's not like in the Prem where they they don't know what's going on. Yeah. So big big season ahead. Yeah. They're all popular opinions. We couldn't get through them all. Um there were some as well we just genuinely couldn't read out um so that's some good ones but yeah i hope it's a, it's a different kind of video hope you've enjoyed it be interesting to know if you agree with our decisions disagree with our decisions or you just think the fact that george and i have copped out one of them is shocking so if you did enjoy the video please don't forget to like comment and subscribe and we'll be back very soon with more content in this uh, pre-season